I'd like to call back your memory to this. Do you remember this? Yeah. yeah. Um, we drew the stem and leaf plot, uh, or rather we wrote it all up based on this data. Uh, we just went through, we did the numbers, it took a bit of time because you often get quite a lot of data for it. But then from there, uh, we noticed two things. I only showed you one of them though. The first thing was, if you turn your graph on its side, um, you can actually think of this thing as a bar graph, right? You don't need to worry about um, all those individual numbers all the time. Sometimes you're just worried about like, well, where are the main groups of numbers? Are they mostly at the edges, mostly in the middle, whatever, okay? Um, the second thing which um, some people ask me about, I didn't show on the board though because I didn't have one ready, is that you, can, you don't have to go from here to a bar graph. Sometimes from your first stem and leaf plot, they might ask you to create an ordered stem and leaf plot. Can you see the difference? It's quite subtle, right? I'll zoom in a little bit. The difference is that when you have a look at these numbers, whoops, I froze it, what did I do that for? When you have a look at the numbers, I've just arranged all of these in ascending order, okay? Um, this is a really useful skill. I think it's most, it's easiest to put it out of order first, right? Make sure you haven't missed any of these and then to put them in order. This will become really important uh, next week when we have a look at uh, quartiles and deciles and percentiles. they all to do with things that are done in order, okay? But just rewinding a second, I want to come back to this because in this lesson we're going to focus on um, bar graphs, column graphs, that kind of thing. So if you haven't already, could you open up your textbook for me? Ah, yeah, I can show you. I, re um, I remember the, the learning about it. But yeah, I that's cool. Why you as a really good question. The short answer is, you're going to do it in exactly the same way, but just left instead of right, or left as well as right, I should say. The reason you do it is if you're comparing two groups of two groups of people, two classes, two teams, something like that. And you're like, oh, one cluster is like really high and the other one's really low, then I can compare them. <laughs> okay, so your heading is um, column and bar graphs, or column or bar graphs. Same deal. Yes. Now this is the first question in 7H. I'm doing this one for you, for free, you're welcome. Um, column slash <coughs> bar graphs. Now, we've already learned lots of different ways of drawing and showing, representing what data is like. I want you to please remember, we're not just showing you lots of these because we can and so you have lots of things to remember. It's because each different way of representing something, it solves a particular kind of problem. Okay? So Tom and bar graphs is where it's like, look, I'm not, I don't want to worry about how much time it takes to get every single score on my stem and leaf plot. I just need to know the overall shape. So when you have a look at data, which it's not as finely detailed, or you don't need to worry about the fine details, that's when we go for these kinds of things, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, we'll do an example of this, and then I'll point out some principles that you can remember to make sure your graphs look really good, okay? So the first thing is, please get a ruler out, right? Get a ruler out. In fact, I'm trying to make a point about this, so even I'm gonna get a ruler out. We're gonna create a column graph for this, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do, is draw myself a set of axes. Is anyone want to borrow a ruler? I've got some. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. <laughs> it's um, it works. Trust me, uh, it really does. It's it's functional. It doesn't well because I don't have to draw them straight this way. I have to draw them straight this way, which. What? I see. <laughs> the look on your face yeah, is completely yeah, unconvinced. Yeah, yeah, I think there's going to be a variety of errors in there. It's like, why is my graph so wavy? Okay. Now, I've got my uh, nice orderly axes, okay? The first thing I want to do before I, I say what's going on here is I need to decide which axis is which, okay? Now, a column or a bar graph, you can set it up horizontally, so all of your bars go this way, or you can set it up vertically. In some senses, 
it doesn't really matter. But I will point out, maybe you want to jot this like near your heading or something like that. There are two kinds of data that you very frequently see one way or the other. And for the rest of it, it's kind of like, eh, whichever you feel like, basically. A lot of data you'll see, this is not an example, but a lot of data you'll see is chronological. Okay? So for example, you might see rainfall or average temperatures or something like that in the months of the year. Okay? Now, if you have data and it's ordered by time, which do you think is most comfortable to list the months this way, up and down, or to oops, list the months this way, across the bottom, from left to right. What do you reckon? Across the bottom. And generally, we're like, oh, passage of time from left to right. Okay? <coughs> so if you've got a chronological one, then usually we have vertical bars, if you've got that kind of data. I mean, you don't have to, but it just looks weird if, um, if you have January, February, March, etc. Okay, so that's the first one. Secondly, if you have some kind of ranked data, so for example, you might say, okay, I've got my different classes and I'm comparing which one had the highest average mark or something like that, okay? Because you're ranking things and you're putting them from like first to last, instead of arranging them vertically, right, we usually have horizontal bars. So you're like, okay, the longest one, the best class, we would put up here, and then the second best, and all the way down. That's just the way we tend to view ranks. Okay. So I'm going to say horizontal bars. Now, this is just usually, there's no rules that say, oh, you have to do it this way. We're just trying to communicate as clearly as we can, and this kind of just feels natural. So those are the two important categories. When you look at one that's like kind of neither here nor there, you really can put it anywhere you like, and um, you, you'll have to read them both ways. Which way would you like me to do this? Vertical bars or horizontal ones? Vertical. Vertical? Okay. Now, I think vertical is pretty, pretty common. When you have these numbers over here, you're like, oh, I think I'm comparing them up and down, that kind of thing. So let's go with, across the bottom, I'm going to have my beef, rice, eggs, fish, etc. Okay, so let's do that. I've got five things there. So uh, it's nice to make these kinds of things evenly spaced. So I'm going to mark them out. Okay. Now, by convention, com and bar graphs, they tend to have gaps between the, um, uh, between the bars. I'll let you have a think for a second as to why that's usually the convention. It's not always, but usually. So I'm going to label each of these according to the food that it is. Okay, so I've got beef, rice, and so on. Okay, so I've got them all set up. Now, I will, before I leave off, I've got this bottom axis sort of all marked out, but I want to say what this thing is, right? So I'm going to put an overarching label over the entire thing. Mm. And that leaves this vertical axis I now have to measure. Now, you can see my highest value is going to be 35. Okay, so that's how high up I need to go. I kind of need to decide how high I need to go, but also a scale. Like, how frequently should I mark it out? It's probably a bit overkill to have 35 individual marks. So what do you think would be like a reasonable amount every, how many to put up? Five? Seven? Um, seven, I think five and seven would both work because I will point out, you've got, um, I mean, five times seven is 35. You've got um, uh, a 13, which is very close to 14. I think though fives are a lot easier to count in. Um, it's gonna be closer to like these guys. So I think fives kind of like fives, tens, they're easy options to go for, okay? So that means if we're gonna go up to 35, you'll need seven markings, won't you? Okay. So make sure you're evenly spacing them out. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> All right. Now the way I tend to like to do it <coughs> is once you've got these numbers in here, we chose them every five, so I'm going to mark in what they are. Five, ten, etc. Don't forget, just like the horizontal axis down here, the vertical axis is worth marking in. And it actually has two pieces of information worth putting on there. What it is, but also what units it's involved in. Okay, So that might be percent, or degrees, or mils, or a mark, whatever it is included. So I'm going to pop it in over here. Done. Done. 
So the last thing is actually to put in the data, okay? So I'm going to mark out where each of these are, and then I'm going to do all of my vertical lines together. So beef comes all the way up to 35, so just make sure you're um, reading across your graph properly and aren't going to the wrong mark. So I'm going to go up. Okay, so as you're completing that, I'm now going to pose the question back to you, because there is a reasonable answer for it, a conventional answer. Why do you think it is, this is a column or bar graph, okay? Um, something which we're going to have a look at next week, very closely related, but slightly different, is something called a histogram. Now when you have a look at a histogram, one of the things you'll notice about it is that histograms are not like this. They don't generally have gaps. So I want you to have a look at this. Why do you think it might be clearer, it might make more sense, to have our bars actually separated from each other and not touching? Yeah. Can you give any suggestions? Yeah, Maddie. Some of them maybe like quite similar, difficult to see. Okay. So the first thing is, just to make it like easier to read, it's like, especially if these were like coloured in solid, it's super obvious. So that's the first thing. Yeah, another yeah, suggestion? Because they're not to show a pattern, they're more like they're showing their own thing. Yeah. yeah, sure. So obviously these are all these are all foods, right? But it's not like, oh, I transitioned from beef to rice and then from rice to eggs. Like these things are genuinely separate things and they're not like interconnected. Like remember when I talked about like months of the year? They're interconnected. They flow onto each other. Do you want to give another suggestion, Sanya? Uh, no, or so a question? Is it, is it wrong if you did them all joined up? Like, um, okay, so the short answer is no. Because like just think, okay? I said this before when we started Dharma Statistics. The rules here are there are no rules, right? It's just like in English. When we talk about like rules in the English language, it's like there are no rules. We break them all the time, okay? It's just about do you communicate clearly, okay? Now, here the convention is we separate them out because number one, it is a bit clearer, as many mentioned. And number two, it communicates that these are separate things, okay? And they're not actually connected to each other. If you put them together, you'll sometimes even see a graph and they're connected. And you're like, hey, what's with that? Okay, you can still read it though. Um, I'm just pointing out, I think it's better, it's better to, when you see one of these, keep them separate. I'll explain later on when we get to them properly. What, when would you do a histogram? Why would it be useful? Like remember I said, these are more useful than a stem and leaf plot if all you want is like the overall pattern. Well, there's a reason for these two. Um, if you've drawn your thing now, and there are no gaps, then just leave it, it's okay. But um, like I said, I think the, the best way to approach it is to, maybe you want to put a note for yourself, yeah. um, that these have gaps. Okay.